So, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and we're still indoors. I'd like to welcome my uh, new prop that you can see down here in the corner. The Henry Hoover, obviously. Anyway, it is wonderful to have you all back and today I would like to make a video kind of outlining what would be probably my top five tips for beginner, budding landscape photographers, whatever you want to call it, or just anybody that's into landscape photography that might appreciate some of my advice as a full-time landscape photographer. So let's get into it. <music> So my first tip in today's video is all about location or more kind of based around being in the right place at the right time. In my opinion, you know, I can't really put a number on it, but a very big percentage of what landscape photography is all about is just being in the right place at the right time. And honestly, take it from me, a lot of, a lot of the time that's just pure luck. You know, I've mentioned in the past a lot of my favorite photographs I've took are just me purely just being in the right place at the right time and on top of that it's not even like I planned to be in that right place at the right time it just happened so I can think of some off the top of my head my three sisters image a photograph that I got um, of Mount Sefton in Mount Cook National Park in New Zealand um, what else uh, the, the quintessential photograph that I'm selling as a print that I got near Ullswater in the Lake District all just in the right place at the right time without pretty much any prior plans or anything like that. I didn't know that these this incredible light or these, these weather conditions were going to unfold. However, I guess my point in terms of the tip practically is, as simple as it sounds, I would never have got the, those photographs. You know, these photographs are ones that I regard as some of my favourite of all time. I wouldn't have got them if I wasn't out at all. So it's all about like effort I suppose and sacrifice you know for me sacrifice has always been a lot about getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning and hiking up a mountain in the pitch black with a head torch on and just kind of um, hoping for the best really you know if you're on the top of a mountain at sunrise and you get an amazing sunrise chances are you're going to get a really nice photograph um, to go along with the location side of things as well um, of course you can plan you can give yourself the best opportunity you can really maximize your chances of getting a really nice sunrise or the light being in the right place at the right time you know or <clears throat> perhaps if you have visited a location regularly you'll come to understand and learn what are the best conditions for that location um, so that's my first tip and it's all about being in the right place at the right time so my second tip is um, something a little bit less on location out on the fieldy in terms of landscape photography and this is basically the importance of editing or post processing now I think this is very subjective but of course because this is these are my tips I think this one's really important for my photography style at least um, in all honesty I think editing my photographs editing my raw files is probably only something I've started taking seriously within the last couple of years to be honest however Personally, with my images, I know it's a huge difference. And again, if I'm putting a percentage on it, honestly, I'd probably give some as high as 30% of importance of post-processing. So yeah, if it's not something you've ever tried or given a shot, I definitely, you know, have a little go on Lightroom or something like that, or there's tons of free ones as well. Like I even use Snapseed on my phone at times and I just edit some JPEGs of shots that I've taken whilst I'm out on location. But it definitely makes a huge difference to my photographs 100% and I would definitely not go back to a, a point where I wasn't really taking editing seriously. Now my raw file that I, I only shoot in raw when I'm out on location I don't have any reason um, to shoot in JPEG for, for, the, for the way my workflow works there's just no point in me shooting in JPEG and um, so I really for right or for wrong, I see my raw file, I don't really see it as a photograph until it gets edited. I just see it as a load of information. I think mine on my Nikon D7200 um, 
uh, it's like 120, 130 mega, uh, megapixels, megabytes by the time it's uploaded into Lightroom on my computer. And yeah, that's just information to me in many ways. That's just my histogram and then it's my editing that actually brings it into a photograph that's a really, really big part of the process for me. Yeah, so that's my second tip and it's all about the importance of post-processing your photographs. So for my third tip, we're going back out on location and this one is all about composition and composition is a huge, huge subject and it's definitely the aspect of photography that from my experience people kind of struggle with the most. Definitely from you know my experience of my own one-to-one -one workshops, people struggle with composition and, and seeing the landscape, you know, it might look amazing but how do I take a photograph here? How do I construct a composition? And for this third tip, it's all about simplicity. I think, again, from my experience, it seems that a lot of, a lot of the time people really overcomplicate composition in their heads, which is completely understandable. And I've been there and I definitely still do it because there's so many you know, rules to composition. There's all things like leading lines and layers. Do you want foreground, midground, background, you know? All these things can make it seem really complicated. And it's really easy to say this, don't get me wrong, rather than to actually put it into practice. But this tip is all about um, keep your composition simple. Simplification, think minimalism and even abstract a little bit sometimes. It doesn't always need to be so complicated. You don't always need to follow like the rule of thirds and foreground, midground, background. You don't always need like several elements in your photograph. For example, think about seascapes, you know, especially if you're just shooting out to sea and you've got no other subjects than perhaps sand, sea and sky. Super minimalist composition and yes, you can follow the rule of thirds, but it's just there's not much to it. Whereas for example, if you think about trying to construct a photograph in the woodland, again, it doesn't have to be complicated, but generally speaking, it tends to be a lot more complicated in somewhere like the woodland. Another example is think about, you know, hiking up to the top of a mountain. You, by doing that, I've said this so many times in the past, you've made such a mint effort by hiking up to the top of a mountain and giving yourself all these amazing views around you. And, you know, married with the first point you've made that effort you've made that sacrifice sacrifice to be in the right place at the right time then think about simplicity you know maybe get your telephoto lens out zoom in on some mountain peaks where you've got some nice light forget about all the rules of composition so yeah admittedly that one's easier said than done but if you can you know, try to think a hell of a lot more about what it is you don't want to include in your photographs rather than trying to chuck as much in there as possible to tell your story. And some of the most powerful and striking photographs are, in my opinion, definitely more simplified and they don't contain tons of different subjects. So that's rule or tip number three. Um, simplify your compositions a little bit. So tip number four, and again, this one's kind of not really to do with being out on location and the physical act of landscape photography. This one is about getting involved in the community. I think this is a really important tip and 100%, 100%, a million percent, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for this incredible landscape photography community. I'm not just talking about this wonderful YouTube channel and all you guys, my awesome subscribers, I'm talking about just Instagram, you know, following other landscape photographers, following their journeys. You can learn so, so much. And I actually meant, I talked about this a little bit in a video that I released ages ago, back like in New Zealand, when I first started this channel. So perhaps some of you might remember this, but I talked all about um, the community of landscape photography a little bit more in depth and um, I mentioned about how before I picked up a camera and started landscape photography I had this real sort of black and white idea of what the, the landscape photography community was like and I just you know I don't know why now I know I'm totally wrong but I had this idea that it was quite snobby and um, people aren't interested in what other people are photographing um, you know, people only shoot with film cameras and everyone hates digital. Just ridiculous. I don't know where are these stupid ideas from. But 
the community has been so so helpful to me i've had i've had some um wonderful collaborations with the likes of ian worth here on youtube like i mentioned before just this youtube channel is a fantastic community in itself and it's just an awesome place to like share and you just get a real sense of belonging i really do feel and it's kind of ironic because i know for a fact i'm well believe it or not you know you might think i'm lying because i have a youtube channel and I sit talking to a camera but i'm generally quite an introverted person and that definitely um is reflected within my love for landscape photography and basically what i mean by that is i'm quite independent i love being out on my own in the fells with my camera and um, when I first started, I never really liked the idea of being out photogra photographing with other people um, and I certainly didn't have a good idea looking forward about doing workshops and stuff. However, from my experience, it's been definitely one of the best things that I've you know, taken or received from getting into landscape photography. It's this incredible community. It's kind of cool because I think, generally speaking, most the vast majority of landscape photographers let me know if you agree with this or not i think the vast majority are quite you know introverted and they love just being out by themselves taking photographs it's almost quite meditative you know it's their meditation and it means a lot to them you know it's really good for people's mental health and things like that just being out by themselves and i'm definitely one of them people but i think it's kind of cool because you've got all these these introverts, all these people that enjoy their own space that then come together to form this community. And I just think that is awesome. And yeah, just a real, real sense of belonging. And that's, that's I think, a really important tip. Tip number four, you know, um, get involved in the community. Perhaps if you've not set up your own little Instagram page, just give it a go. Start following some other landscape photographers, some pages that, are, you know, revolve around landscape photography, start a Flickr, even a Twitter, you know, just get involved in the community. And it doesn't necessarily have to be social media. You know, of course you can join camera clubs. You can just go out with friends and, and talk about photography. You know, if you've got some friends that are also into it, um, it's absolutely awesome. So that's tip number four. Okay, so the fifth and final tip for fellow landscape photographers is all about gear. I think this one has to be mentioned and basically about don't focus too much of your attention on gear. I think this is very much a mindset thing and this could be applied to anything that kind of revolves around consumerism, you know, like um, if you if you don't if you don't if you genuinely don't think that your gear holds you back, then you really shouldn't put too much of your energy into it. Focus your attention and your energy on being out with whatever you've got, out on location, and just getting better at landscape photography, practicing. Even if you've got a phone, use your phone. Like smart smartphones nowadays are mental. They are so good for photography. Like I said before, a lot of, a lot of the time I take photographs with my phone and I edit the images on Snapseed and that's just like JPEGs or whatever. Um, but yeah, um, it's probably worth mentioning that personally, might sound a little bit contradictory, but I love gear. Like I thoroughly enjoy it. I love researching about gear. Um, I love watching YouTube videos that you know other photographers release about gear. I love all the specifications and probably quite geeky in a way, quite gadgety. However, I very rarely spend that much money on gear. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, what do they call it? Gas gear acquisition syndrome. Sometimes it happens where I just think, oh, I really want a new camera. I know I don't really need one. Even the, the camera that I'm filming on now, the Canon M50, um, I've, I only bought that recently. If you follow me on YouTube, you'll know, probably about two or three months ago, I used to shoot with this little beast here, the Canon G9X, and um, by shoot with, I mean film my videos. And this has been such a mint camera, and this is the one that I would have filmed my first ever YouTube video on back in New Zealand. and. You know, in terms of many of the specifications, even though this camera was a lot older, there wasn't really that much difference. But for me, um, I think it's important to say if you do focus on gear, really, really understand what it is that you're wanting. You know, why you're spending your money. For me, when I got my M50, it was very much because it had a flip round articulating screen, whereas this didn't. So for filming myself, it was really difficult because I couldn't see myself. That 
the M50 also had a microphone port, so I could attach a microphone to the top of the camera and I didn't have to use like a lav mic and synchronize the audio in post-production. Um, it's got interchangeable lenses, it's got um, a thread on the, on the front of the lens so I can attach a neutral density filter. All these things for me kind of added up to make me think, right, it's going to be worth the £400 investment or whatever it is that I paid for it. But yeah, one thing that I always like to tell myself as well is, for example, like this D7200 is, say, 24 megapixels. Now, don't get me wrong, I know it's not all about megapixels, but it's just an easy number to go off in terms of comparison. And then, I think, like, the Nikon D1, it was released in 1999, maybe 2000, which was, I think it was, like, the first proper, like, practical DSLR. And I think the only reason it was practical is because it had a two... Two point something, two or three megapixel sensor um, that meant it was quite kind of just good enough to actually print photographs on. So that's why people said it was practical. But think about like that compared to that now. And like, of course, that's like 20 years ago, but you've got to understand that that camera was probably like four and a half thousand pounds or something to buy brand new. Um, but that was like the top of the range camera at the time, which really just thinking like that makes me think, oh God, I'm, I'm so grateful to have this. This is a mint piece of kit. And just that little thought process a lot of the time just makes you think like, yeah, I can probably wait a bit until I upgrade. Um, but yeah, I think that's it really. Just don't focus on the gear too much, especially if you're a beginner. And I revert back to what I said before. It's all about being out on location and practicing the trade of landscape photography. That's what it's all about. I've been there in the past where um, I was lucky because I lived in New Zealand and where I lived on the South Island I could just go out the front door and it was like world-class landscapes um, But I was still out every day just practicing failing making an idiot of myself just couldn't get my head, head around manual settings Composition I didn't even know where to start but now I'm at a point where I feel quite comfortable and happy where I am with my landscape photography and Yeah, I think those five tips are something that's really important to me and definitely th tips or um, I don't know like subjects that I like to continuously tell myself and remind myself over time um, to make sure I'm headed in the right direction I suppose so yeah I do hope this video has brought some value to you guys thank you so much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed Henry the Hoover the new prop and uh, he shall be making an appearance I also hope some of you have or appreciated or even noticed that I've been trying to swap and change some of the photographs around. Um, I know a lot of you guys are not going to get the chance to come to my exhibition um, this summer. I still don't know if it's going to be on or yet with coronavirus but um, <clears throat> as it stands it's still going to be on but yeah I know a lot of you ain't going to be able to come so I'm trying to like revolve the framed prints that I've got um, framed already up on this wall so you can at least see some of them. But anyway Thanks again. Cheers for the sport, uh, sport? support. Uh, please give the video a like. As always, if you have a quick second, um, that really does help my videos out. And comment below, perhaps you have some more tips, perhaps some things that you think might be more important, and generally, what are your opinions on the things we've covered and talked about today. Thanks again. See you on the next one. Out.